Ohio adventure continues. We've already committed some aviation with $100 hamburgers and a tour of the great sporties and flight outfitters facilities. But now we'd be stepping it up a notch, a day of short flights and a PC-12 eventually ending up in Neil Armstrong's hometown where there's also a museum dedicated in his honor, him being the first man on the moon. All right, we're gonna have a big day again. Just getting started. Um, we kind of adjusted overnight to the time zone. It's like 11 in the morning. But we were gonna go flying in a PC-12. And I think the plan is to go to Neil Armstrong's museum and then go somewhere else for lunch, all on the PC-12. So it should be a lot of fun. Cool footage, great airplane. Our first stop of the day would be Columbus, Indiana. Columbus Tower, Pilatus 327, Julia Zulu is with you on the visual. Pilatus 327, Julia Zulu, Columbus, wind 260 at 5, altimeter 3030, runway 23, clear to land. Clear to land, runway 237, Julia Zulu. All right, so that was pretty dang sweet. A lot of it was just letting John do his thing. It's really cool to see how professional he is. Now, he is a professional pilot. That's not what he does for a living. And what I mean by that is he was just very professional in everything he did. It's very cool to see. So, very great avionics there with the Garm, all the Garmin stuff, the retrofit that he had, and I enjoyed it. Yeah, just kind of good to be a fly on the firewall, if you will, and watch all that. That's a sweet airplane. So now we're gonna pop inside, have lunch, after a bit of lunch and getting charged for the day, it was time to head to Wapakoneta, Ohio, where Neil Armstrong was born. Cameron would take this leg from the right seat just to give him an opportunity to fly in this awesome airplane. He's a software developer, so I figured both of them could really nerd it out on all the great avionics, and uh, it didn't disappoint. Chris, did you make sure to tie that uh, big rock to the back of the plane? <laughs> yep, yep, I got a cement block back there. We got pretty much two everything, two GPSs, two radios, two AHARs, two screens, two transponders, two wings, one engine. <laughs> Alright, so our takeoff briefing here is, I'm going to call it airspeed alive, 60 knots, 80 knots, we're going to rotate at 80 when we're out of runway. We're going to pick the wheels up, if anything happens below 1,200 feet, we're going to land straight ahead in the field. Above 1,200 feet, we can make it back to the airport and we'll make a left turn. Roger. I'm sorry, right turn into the wind. Right turn. If you see something you don't like, holler. Will do. 327 Julia Zulu, runway 23, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, So this is what I was saying about John's professionalism. These are airline and corporate level style procedures and call outs that he's using here. While this environment is certainly more casual, it's certainly nice to see safety taken seriously. And it's clear that that is John's MO. Closest thing to an airliner, man. Pretty good, isn't it? Yep. Not very good airline service between Columbus, Indiana and <laughs> Wapakoneta, Ohio. The 
wouldn't surprise me if Garmin updates these soon. I think they I think they are. Although I tell you what's interesting is since their touchscreen, they have done so much in just software updates. Like the VNAV on here is incredible now, and they just did it with software. That was recent, right? Yeah. To, to yeah, if you have worked this with the GFC 500. Yeah, and this plus that is incredible. The VNAV display on here. It's really it's, nice. Oh, it's like a it's like a big jet. I mean, it's yeah. like a full FMS. You can it'll automatically load all the step downs on an arrival. Really? Yeah. So how did it, how does it display those? You get a little V nav. Uh, you get a vertical like speed a, required there. Okay. Right? But then you get a little V nav, just like a glide slope here. Gotcha. And so it, as long as you keep it on that, and you see on the flight plan page, well, if we had it here, you'd have that altitude. The restrictions. It would show you the restrictions there, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, we got a little drive here. I think there's a crew car we can try to get here. We'll see. Worst case scenario, we can do over. Maybe. What? Here in Wapakoneta. You <laughs> 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 know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> We're doing 278 knots on this leg, so clearly the co-pilot's got a little more skill than the last leg. <laughs> the engine quits. we got a couple fields to consider. That's the good news. This is true. That's the good news. You got a lot of force landing. <laughs> uh, this thing's a pretty good glider. This is, so let's see, 11,000 feet. We could probably go 25 miles. So anything in that ring. That's crazy. You could glide too. When you're up high, like 27,000, you can glide like 50 miles. So especially east of the Mississippi, you're almost always in range of an airport. What's your best glide for that? About 110 knots. Neil Armstrong, traffic, Pilatus, about 8 to your southwest. We'll be entering on a left downwind for landing 2-6. The applause for Armstrong. Can you repeat your call sign? 327, Juliet Zulu. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, were you guys in for practice or are you uh, needing fuel or anything uh, else? Uh, we were wondering if we could borrow a courtesy car from you for about an hour if that's an option. Uh, yes, sir. Are you guys familiar with the airport? Not really, but uh, we go into the main ramp there up, up on the north side by the road. Affirmative. Uh, west side ramp and then uh, we'll meet you out there with the car. Great. Thanks a lot. Look at that. Small town hospitality. <laughs> huh? Way to go. Any better than that. All right, the flaps are down. The gear is three green. Headlights are on. Yaw damper is away. Runway's clear. 500. Three green. Gear's down. Three green. Bunch of birds out there. I'd like them to go away. Yeah, I'm watching them there too. Sink. Jesus. Jimmy damper on the <laughs> nose wheel, man. So you're never gonna land on the moon when you land on the same runway as Neil Armstrong. There you go. <laughs> that gets me something, right? <laughs> yeah. So if you want to buy one of these for me, that would be cool. <laughs> hey, let's go halfsies. I got yeah, no problem. No problem. Isn't that amazing? I love the Garmin setup because it's like the familiarity of what you already know. It's ridiculous, dude. This is an amazing airplane. And cruising at almost like 300 miles an hour. Jeez. I would take this over one of the new avionics package any day. Oh, I'd take this over a jet, 100%. Yeah, for real. 100%. The old terminal that we have here was built in 1970. Uh, Neil did come and go from the airport here, which is aptly named the Neil Armstrong Airport. Uh, it was named after he completed the Gemini 8 mission. And uh, I, I don't know the frequency of how many times he'd been in and out, but after he became uh, the instructor in Cincinnati, that's when he was, we know that he was in and out through here a fair amount. Huh. Not a real public guy, so he would come and go. He would get in touch with the airport manager at the time and arrange uh, you know, for his family to come in and whatnot. But uh, he, he, was, he did frequent the airport a fair amount. So, so out of this actual little building here. Yeah, out of this uh, little building. That's awesome. Now, for those of you that have been living under a rock, Neil Armstrong was the first man to set foot on the moon. That's one small step for man. One 
It was so much more than just that. There was an entire nation, an entire crew, an entire world behind him cheering him on. It's a true showing of the human ingenuity, curiosity, and determination that it takes to make big things happen. Since I can remember in my own personal life, I've really appreciated the Apollo program and everything that went into our race to the moon. Heck, we even named one of our boys, our oldest boy, Apollo. And it had to partially do with that, that connection to aviation. So this was going to be a real treat for me to be able to go to see where Neil Armstrong grew up and learn more about his life. Okay, we made it to the Neil Armstrong Air and Space Museum. Pretty cool. Just a small town, but they've got a museum for him here. This is where he's from, Wapakoneta. I think I said that like 12 times already. Anyway, this will be pretty sweet. I'm a big space nerd. I don't know about you guys. So there's this really nice presentation on this screen here that talked about um, the in-flight emergency they had on this mission. And they had a, uh, a thruster that was stuck and it was rotating the craft like up to a revolution per minute. And that can cause blackouts at that rotation. Anyway, they had to stabilize it. They used up 75% of their re-entry fuel doing it. So it was pretty mission critical by the time they got done. So anyway, that, this is Gemini. This is the gem, actual Gemini capsule that Neil Armstrong was in. And in other news, so oh. so, this, so this is soon to be, yeah, this and then this probably, is actually, yeah. oh, probably, no, probably. And then you go through like there's all the other countries and all the and, So is there one from the Wapakoneta that says he actually did it? Yeah, there's a, uh, you know, anxious. Orlando Sentinel, up the news. Po 11 fight going smooth. Perf news. It's on perfect path. Neil steps on the moon, that's so cool. And yeah, that's, that's awesome. The Bangkok Post. Okay. What struck me at the museum was just how unassuming of a man Neil was. He started out as a private pilot. I think in moments like this, we can find ourselves not much different from a person who did really big things, a person like Neil Armstrong. Similar love of country, hardworking, he grew up in an unassuming town, just a regular everyday guy. He just happened to be at the right place at the right time to be the guy that did it. The guy that first set foot on the moon. Museum, super cool, inspiring. Got a gift for my son Apollo. Yes, that's how much I like this stuff. Or at least a little bit. That you know, kind of why we named him Apollo a little bit. And yeah, that was great. How cool. Lunch at one airport, head to the Neil Armstrong Museum in his hometown. And now we're gonna go back home and it's awesome. I love aviation. Sounds like Neil did too. Just never changes once it gets in your blood. It just stays there. Now it's time to head back to Lunkin Field. What a special time here in Wapakoneta. A memory that I won't soon forget. Armstrong Airport. There's the moon. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That dude walked on that. Crazy. Seems kind of unbelievable. It is unbelievable, but not impossible. No. U.S. Navy ought to tell that story more. 
You know, a little farm yeah. boy from Wapakoneta, Ohio. Oh, for sure. Navy pays for him to come, become an aeronautical engineer at Purdue. And then he ends up on the moon. I mean, that's kind of the way that's supposed to work, isn't it? Yep. And, and there are lesser... I mean, because you can't get greater. Yeah. Right. There are lesser stories sure. than that that are a dime a dozen yeah. of people who've had great careers that way. Neil Armstrong, traffic, Pilatus departing runway 26 will be making a left turn out to the south. Neil Armstrong, traffic. See you guys. Thanks for the hospitality, guys. See ya. You bet. Speed's alive, there's 60. Here's 80. And to the moon! Off we go, Saturn V! <laughs> Too cool. That was a great, that was really memorable. That was neat, I'm glad we did that. Lived in Ohio for 30 years, never been there. It's kind of sad, but yeah, well, glad we did it. Those two back there. That's, I can hear their laughter through my head. That's trouble, man. That's trouble back there. <laughs> I've seen that before. <laughs> it's, it's Neil. <laughs> there, I just felt it. See it right there, you can see it, right? It's that brown yep. layer. Oh. <laughs> Are those peanut butter cookies coming back to bite or what? Clear touch and go 2-5, one on two echo, Romeo. The nice machine. It's great. And it's not like, it's not a pain to fly. Right. Which is fun. Like, this seems really smooth. You wouldn't do this in like a Phenom 100 or something. I mean, I guess you could, but it would just, it'd be a whole different deal, right? Right, but exactly. It, it's a, got a small airplane feel enough that it's fun to do these kind of trips. Yep. And if you want to load it out and do a big airplane trip. Yep. Kind of can. You want to fly this thing for a minute? Don't have to ask me twice. VFR, why not? It's, okay. uh, so I'm going to pull the trigger here. Okay. Feel it. There's a trigger there. Yeah. So that's you got your coolie hot, hot switch here, and that's your tram forward uh, yeah. for nose and aileron, but you got to squeeze the trigger first. So okay. I'll, if you squeeze it, that'll get rid of the autopilot, but leave the flight director on. Okay. So your airplane. My airplane. Got it? Yep. Yeah, this is really smooth. I mean, once you're in a situation like this, yep. you could just kind of one-hand it. But uh, That's an honest airplane. So is it all cable-driven? Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's amazing. Just so impressive how precise Clear, touch and go, two, five. all these avionics make everything now. Does kind of make it like cheating, doesn't it? Yep. I'll tell you what, we'll be lazy here and sneak down to and off talk to Cincinnati. Can I get the option? What you can do here is, I can go over here to vertical speed yeah, and engage. I'll just follow that two, five, and put the nose down, down a little bit. So just, now you got vertical speed at 900 feet a minute down, you're going to intercept 4,500 feet, so. Push it over and then I'll pull back the power. So I'm going to go blowing through the mock knocker here. Really got to lay it on that trim, Yeah, huh? you do. Like you know, I was telling him in the Sears, you just hit a pop of it, you know? It's yeah, like, exactly. Bam. And this thing, man, you got to roll it. And then you can see here, this, see the blue banana there? Oh, yeah. That's, That's your bottom, bottom of descent. descent right. Yeah. So, like, I'm just trying to be below 5,000 by the Class B. Okay, perfect. It takes all the calculation out, right? It's just like... Absolute cheating. And that's great on these, you know, RNAV arrivals and stuff, you know, cross Gavin, 12,000 feet. Set vertical speed. You, get, you know exactly what you got to do. Lincoln Tower, Pilatus 327, Julia Zulu, about 10 to your north, inbound for landing with the information. Pilatus 327, Julia Zulu, Lincoln Tower, report five miles north, uh, plan on a right base entry to runway uh, 25. Okay, five miles north, we'll plan on right base for 257, Julie Tula. Thanks for letting me fly, this is awesome. Sure, man. This is the old Blue Ash Airport. See that park with that tower. All this dirt here, that used to be runway 24, and this wow. is the taxiway here. They're slowly turning. Up until a year ago, you could still see the runway, but they put those condos in finally. But that was where they ran the shuttle from there, the GE, out to that place in People. So if you look down that valley, that huge factory right there, that's yeah. GE Jet Engines. No way. Yep. Did they build a shuttle here? So no, they they had a air, they had a, ran a Cessna 402 where they ran engineers out every morning. They took off from that airport and they flew out to that hilltop airport out there by Peoples. Wow. All right, I'll take it. Your controls. My airplane. And pull out a seven Julie Zulu is about five north. I uh, set up for right base for two five. Pull out a seven Julie Zulu. You're currently number two runway two five, following a Cessna that is short final clear to land. Number two clear to land two five seven Julie Zulu. 
right, three green, no red. Gears down, lights are on, flaps are set. God amps is away. 500. Three green, gears down, clear to land. Nicely done. A lot of 7 Julia Zulu, taxi via Echo Alpha into your hangar, stay with me. Echo Alpha to the hangar with you, 7 Julia Zulu, good night. Slap We're handle. Any time, we can take higher initial if you're able. Speed on 6 November 5, sure. Saying that, so it's not in gear. Yep, what do you really cool. Need? Got a lockout, so shouldn't happen anyway, but, but still good. an expensive mistake. Yep. Whiskey, and I jump around between four, airplanes four, enough that I try not to make that mistake. So why does it feel like we hit the brakes when it goes into the flare? Uh, when you make it idle. So when you pull this five blades to flat, when you go flight idle, they go flat pitch. Okay. So flaps 40, we call that flaps 50. Because it is okay. Okay. It's like throwing out the anchor. They can definitely notice yeah. as soon as you do that. No, that, that five blade prop, when you pull it back to flat pitch, you are done flying. Alright, Nada, we got ECS, windshields, probes, strobes, anti-ice, headlights, flaps 15, three trims, radar, ECS, equal fan. Well, John, I liked it. Alright, I'm glad. <laughs> But I think I'm looking for something a little bigger, a little faster. <laughs> All right, well, there's an Embraer Legacy 600 taking off over there. It may have something that can help you with that. You, uh, don't wave them down. If you want to buy that one, we could give that one a trial. Okay. Uh, we're we're going to have to sell a lot of flight bags. Okay, we're done for the day. Just left the hangar. What a cool day. Uh, be able to fly the PC-12. And, like, literally, I was able to fly the PC-12. Cool airplane, really hospitable and nice of John to do that with us. And man, that's just America right there. And I'm proud to be an American. Not to say that there aren't other great places, but I am proud to be an American and just go to these small airports where they're still vibrant, lots going on, learn about an American boy, turn man, turn man on the moon, Neil Armstrong, and get to do it with my boys too. Just so cool. And just feeling really grateful. Um, Heart full and cool stuff. I'm loving Ohio, I'm loving the Midwest, and couldn't be more grateful to be here. Thanks for joining us on this episode. Join us on the next episode as we go skeet shooting and we get there by a helicopter. It's pretty crazy. My first ever helicopter ride. Thanks again to Sporties and Flight Outfitters for all the great adventures and memories. Definitely check them out. Until next time, throttle on. <laughs>